And we've got this equation. So we can actually figure out what x equals. Right? I'm going to add 1 to this side. So I'm going to get 1 minus cosine 2 theta equals 17 over 2 over x. Is everybody okay if I multiply both sides by x? I have x times all that. And so eventually I'm going to get x equals 17 over 2 times that. And that's what x is. Multiply there, you'd have an x in front, so you'd be 17 over 2 divided by that, and there you go. And the good news is you now have only how many variables in your fault equation? One. And what is that variable? Thank you. So, for the x, 17 over 2, 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And for the y value, it's going to be everything that you have for x times another what? Tangent. Then, all you got to do, and is everyone okay with if you were just take the derivative now and you get 2f, f prime equal, and just take the derivative that. If you maximize, if you find the value that maximizes this, would you agree it's also the value that's going to maximize the fold square? If you can find the theta that works for this. Find the theta that maximizes this, it's going to be the theta that maximizes this, because that's what? Squared. Please do not take the derivative yet, because it'd be pretty nasty. You'd have two in front of all that, raised to the first power, times the derivative of all that, right? Yeah, not a good day. Not a pretty day. But that's what you're, you're there. Now, notice, have we really done any calculus yet? Yeah. If you can't do trig, you're going to get crushed like a bug. Now, I'm going to see if you uh, uh, get what I'm getting at here. Notice, you got that squared, all that squared, and you got all that squared. I'm going to fact, I'm going to write this and see if you can figure out what I was doing. How did I get from the second step to the third step? What did I do? Yeah, I factored it out. Since it's, it's right here, squared, and it's really right there squared with a tangent squared, right? I just factored it out of both. And when I did that, it sure didn't make that look pretty, did it? It's a lot better than having two separate fractions to take the derivative of. And then I am hoping that someone in here tells me something special about the part right there. Yeah, and what does it equal? Secant squared theta. Or 1 over what? Cosine squared. Is that okay? I'm going to write it as 1 over cosine squared. Now, oh, and don't forget that's got a big what above it. Square. Wait, Mr. Evans. Okay, all of that's being squared. That's being squared. That's being squared. And they're multiplied together. They're not, since they're multiplied together, do you take, agree that I can do what? With the, what can I do next? Take the square, take the square root of it. And it's easy to take the square root of this, because I can take the square root of this one, square root of this one separate, because they are what? Multiplied together. 
when they were added together like this, you can't take the square root of this one and the square root of this one separate. Can't do that. Y'all know that, right? You can't take a square root of a squared plus b squared is not a plus b. Somebody's gonna write down our test. So the f equals 17 over 2 times 1 minus cosine 2 theta times cosine theta. And folks, that is your fold equation right there. That is how long the fold is. And now what do you have to do to that? You have to take its what? Take its derivative. Now, to take its derivative, you might want to rewrite it and avoid the quotient rule. Take both of these and move them up to the numerator and make it what? Raise the exponent of what? Negative 1. But that, yeah, you may want to avoid doing uh, the quotient rule there because you just got a, new, uh, a constant in the numerator. Plus, once you find out what theta is, you can substitute right in here and that'll tell you how long the fold is, won't it? Somebody says, well, what about the negative square root? Don't have to worry about it. I don't want my fold to be positive. I don't want my fold to be negative. So that right there is really important. That, that, that equation, we're ready to do some calculus. Getting to there is important because that gets you to where you can do some calculus. Now, to do some calculus, I would probably rewrite that. I started teaching BT calculus. We may have to put a whole dry erase board across there. This is not a BC problem, by the way. It's, it's, honestly, this probably is a little bit beyond BC. Uh, but you'll notice, have we done any calculus yet? We've used the calculus idea. Get the fold equal to take the Work out. Well, all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the fold equal. And we'll see if I can write it right here. Fold equals 17 halves parentheses and oh gosh. See that cosine two theta? There's a trig identity that can turn that all into cosine. And why would I want to do that? That way I can do what? Multiply those together, right? Someone tell me what that tree identity is for. Make that all into cos uh, into cosines. Okay, so it's gonna be one minus and cosine two theta. Well, I can work it out. Uh, I'll have to well I'll do it right here. Cosine 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's the only one I really know. But what do I know about sine squared? It is what? 1 minus cosine. So that's going to be cosine squared theta minus parentheses 1 minus cosine squared theta, which is going to give me a positive 2 of them minus 1. So, 1 minus this joke you better rewrite 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 putting that step in there and then that's going to be 1 minus a minus is going to make what? a positive 1, right? That makes a positive one there. Don't forget the cosine theta is still on the end. Uh, it's going to be 2. Let's write that out. 17 over 2. And that's going to be 1 plus 1. That's going to be 2 times that cosine theta. And then if I do it here, 
it's going to be a negative 2 cosine squared times that cosine is going to be what? Negative cosine what? Cubed. So I get negative cosine cubed theta. And everybody's telling me that's supposed to be in the denominator, right? Oh, and don't forget, uh, okay, we got two of them there, and it should be negative 2 cosine cubed right there. Make sure I put those twos in the right place. Okay, we got po a positive, positive 1 is 2 times that. And then we got negative 2 cosine squared times that, which is negative 2 cosine cubed. And in order to not put that in the denominator, is everybody okay if I just put a big old negative 1 above it? And why would I do that? So that I don't have to use the what? The quotient rule. And just avoid the quotient rule. So f prime equals 17 halves times negative 1. All of that in parentheses raised to the negative 2. Folks, if it's a negative 2, that's going to put it in the denominator, right? And if it puts it in the denominator, it's probably not going to affect where it equals 0. It could affect where it's undefined which might be a legitimate answer, but I'm not too worried about that. Then I'd take the derivative of what is in the parentheses. What's the derivative of cosine theta? Negative sine theta. And Mr. Evans already realized what she have factored out of both of these. Two. Two. And if I did that, that would change that to what right there? Because that was in the denominator, right? Factor out of two, to the four there. Okay. Now I'll take the derivative, and it makes it easier. I get negative sine theta minus 3 cosine squared theta times a negative sine theta, because i got to use the power rule there. Now, I'm only worried about this part equaling 0. I'm not even worried about the denominator right now. I factor out of cosine theta. I've got a 2 cosine theta, and I'm going to get zeros and pi's. Make that equal zero. The only thing that's going to make that equal zero are zeros and pi's. And if that equals zero or pi, that's a cosine of zero degrees or 180 degrees. Do you have a fold if you have theta equals zero or theta equals 180? No, you don't even have a fold, so that's not good. And I'm kind of doing that in my head to help you out. But anyway, you get this. You get negative sine theta minus, well, that's going to be plus 3 cosine squared theta sine theta equals 0. What will factor out of both those? Sine. sine theta. Factor out sine theta, and we get 3. Cosine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. Sine theta equals 0 at 0 and pi. We've already determined that 0 and pi are not good answers. So we get cosine squared theta equals 1 over 3. Cosine of theta is going to equal a positive 1 over the square root of 3. We don't want a negative angle. We've already looked at the picture. Do we want a negative angle? No, we want that. There it is. But somebody says, Mr. Evans, 1 over square root of 3 is not on our unit circle, is it? Not a problem. Because if it's not on the unit circle, you were supposed to have learned in my class to draw a triangle. Remember the reference triangle? And we call it the bow tie? Somebody here does. So, we don't, we're, we can erase this little part right here. Maybe. Yeah, we'll erase all that. They tell them. At least this class acts like they're paying attention. The other class, they were just playing and giggling and carrying on. I think a bunch of them deserve B's in here now. I'd hate to you know, just tell them they deserve B, but they do. Have one of them tell me this problem wasn't important. Said, yeah, it is. Well, they might be right. They're majoring in history or English or philosophy is probably may not be important. Okay, here's how you deal with it. You see how you know what the cosine of theta equals? 
Well, you see this formula over here where it only has cosines and thetas in it? You don't even have to draw the triangle. What you can do is you can just put the fold equals 17 over 2 parentheses uh, I simplified that. Oh, right here. Let's use that one. Uh, cosine theta minus cosine cube theta. I'm looking for the easiest place where I have the fold written. And, then I'll, and since it's already all in cosines, I don't even have to make a triangle. Okay, it's going to be 17, 2, and the cosine of theta is 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 over the square root of 3 squared, uh, cubed. Is that all right? So the fold is going to equal 17 over 2, 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3 square roots of 3. Is that cool? So then 17 over 2 times, get a common denominator, 3 square roots of 3. It's going to be 2 right there, because it will be 3 minus 1, so you're going to get 2 of them. And you get 17 over 4. over 3 square root of 3, right? Which would be 17 times 3 square root of 3 God, Evan, you left out a 2 somewhere. I know you did. Did you factor out a 2 and you lost it? 1 plus 1 is Uh, yeah, there's a 2 here, that's a positive 2, and there's a 2 there, right? And if you factor that out, that makes that what? 17 what? 4. Oh, I did put it right here, I just didn't put it there. Should have put it right there. 17, 40. Yeah, which means that this would be 17 over 4 here, 17 over 4 here, 17 over 4 here. That's going to be a 4, so 2 times 4 is going to be what? 8. And the only reason I know that is because if you put a 4 down there, you get 22 point something for the fold. And it's not 22 point something, it's 20, we know it's 11 point something, right? Work that out and see what that is, see what that equals. That's your fold right there. And that's 51 square roots of 3. So we're thinking the fold, the shortest, Fold is 51 square root of 3 over 8. Punch out your calculator and see what you get. You should get 11. You're not going to get exactly 11, but you're going to get real, real close. It's not 10 point something, but it's real close. It's 11 point something. 11 point 11.04. So, Four zero four what? Zero four one eight. Okay, so it'd be four over a hundred. One twenty fifth. So when you were guessing one thirty second, you were pretty close. Uh, one eighth was was in the ball game. One sixteenth would have been real close. Uh, some of your rulers have one sixteenth. Some have one thirty seconds, but they're usually you know metal ruler, you know little v slashes. But that's pretty good. That's what the actual fold is right there. Now, do you notice how much trig is involved in working that? Do you kind of get it a wild feeling when you see that it works out to be a nice number like 1 over the square root of 3? Somebody says, is that a nice number? Yeah, 1 over the square root of 3 is not bad. My problem was, I kept thinking it would be like the square root of 3 over 2, so the angle was 30 degrees. Uh, at 60 degrees. You'd have a 60-30 triangle, but it's not. It's not a 60-30 triangle. 
Uh, I mean, it's something you might want to get. But the trig that you have to recognize, it saves you like this little trig I did right here. Now, I'll be honest, first time I've worked this, I squared that out, I squared that out, I pulled that out, I squared all that out, pulled that I did not see that factoring trick. Okay? But that factoring trick makes it really nice because it also gives you this what? This trig identity right here. And if you didn't have that trig identity, you couldn't get this thing where it was pretty easy to uh, uh, take the derivative of Because you got to admit, that's not the hardest derivative you've ever done, right? That's not a bad derivative compared to what y'all have done. Uh, 3 cosine squared theta times negative sine makes it a plus. It's just not that bad. Now, I factored those 2's out. And if I factored the 2's out there, they wouldn't have been here. But that wouldn't matter because we didn't do did we even use this part anyway? No. We knew that didn't leave anywhere. You could, if you had to, go over to the side of the page and, and show that that doesn't leave anywhere, but it doesn't. You get you don't get good answers. Now if you want to guarantee that was the shortest fold, you can take the second derivative of that, substitute that in, and make sure that it was the bottom of a curve, right? Uh, might be worth doing that, but I don't, I'm not going to. Uh, I like it. I like it. Gave me something to do today. Uh, this problem was on an MIT midterm.